Good evening. I feel like I was just here. Guys, I can't skip my channel, even though a lot of you are over. Um, not anymore, Rachel Harmon, but thank you for promoting it. I am losing subscribers like crazy. Um, even though a lot of you are over on the other channel, and I so appreciate and, and all of that, I still have to have my one-on-one -on -one time with you guys. Plus, we built this thing. We built this city. Um, so we kind of have to, we have to, right? You're cool with this, right? I mean, clearly you are. There's people here. I'm here. You're here. But uh, I got to do it. I got to do it. Hey, witness. Lori Ellingson. Shay, I feel like I just saw you too, girl. Thanks for being here. Hey, Noel. Tammy Morgan. Lacey Silver. My sister, Curious George. Baby Steps. Hey, babe. <clears throat> Speaking of. Hi, Chauncey. There's Prancy. There's Prancy Toes. Oh, you're little. My God, you're small. Did you realize that you were going to be this little, though? Hi, Jilbo. Gina's here. Caroline in the moment. Debbie P. Hey, Brian Lucas. Michelle Panko. I hope you're feeling better, my friend. I hope you're better today than you were yesterday. It's just me, Gina Erickson. Uh, Anne, Xenu in the body, Thetans. Why do I feel like this needs to be brought down a little bit, maybe? K Fake, love you, girl. Liz Tricks. Hey, Sophia. Rona Cooley. Uh, Witchy Trista, Abigail's here, Yawn, Layla. Layla, you are around the clock. I just, you are in every uh, time I see you and I just, what is it? And I love you, Layla. Uh, Florence Southard, Marsha, Mandy Albert, Malvakai's here, Rockstar Grand. Hey, first live in a while. Yeah, it has been a minute. Good to see you, babe. Hey, Kestrel. Zenu in the body, Thetans. Aaron Cooper, peace, lady. Prancy toes. Uh, Danny, hello again. Jezebella Mode. Jemaya, howdy from Maine. That's awesome. Mend Candy, thank you. I feel like it's been a minute, but maybe not. Jenny gets chatty. I've seen you. Good to see you again. Valerie, I'm glad you're back. Lisa Kelson. Aw. Lisa, love you, girl. Ditto Deb, Margie Barr, yarn preppers always with us. Beach Bum Beagle. Um, Love you, girl or guy. Beach Bum Beagle could go either way. I just, I got a girl vibe. I'm not sure though. Uh, coughing less. Glad to hear that, Panko. Seriously. Uh, does she know that she's tiny? Did you know that you're really, uh, oh. Did you know that you're extra tiny though? But did you, oh, oh. Did you know that you're born right next to the Lord? Did you know that you were right next to little Christ? Little JC. Oh, all right. Hey, Ty's channel. Been enjoying you and Tommy on Relatable. I listen as I fall asleep. I love that. Gretchen, love you, girl. So does Gertie. Oh, my God. That's cute, Caroline, in the moment. Hey, JR. Amy Joe, Lisa Vining. Bridget Alexander. Tina Mays. It has been. A okay. Yes, honey. I definitely see you. And I didn't forget that you were in my arms right next to my face. Your face is close to my face. I don't know if you knew. Uh, Tina Mays. Yes, it's been. Okay. Uh, Mary Barons is here. Squirrel Girl. West Coast Fancy Nancy. Not I Am. You're going to lurk? That's perfectly okay. I'm just glad you're here. Keela, love you, girl. Tanya. Brandy, you're a fine girl. It's been a minute with you, too. I'm happy that you made it. Tiffany Lane. Yvonne. Love you. Yeah, Yvonne. Have we not talked? I feel like I haven't seen you. Lacey Silver's back. You're so nice, Layla Bradley. Lori Driscoll. Lori Driscoll, you are funny. Kitty Whiskers, how cute. Judy Lee. Next, I think I'm going to name my next dog Chancy. Chauncey. Chauncey. Oh, oh, okay. Martha Slemmer, love you, girl. Hey, Ev Barney. Ewa Fredrickson. Oh, I knew it. Girl vibes. I knew it. I knew this. Uh, not late for once, Kestrel. And you know what, Kestrel? You get a pass. Uh, fall leaves, Mandy Alberts. Yes, she does, Brian Lucas. She's a funny little thing. Hey, Tony Tudor. Amy Edge. I am doing well. Thank you, Amy. Julia, 543. 
Lisa Kelson, I'm happy to entertain you for that girl. Dory Harvey, good to see you, Dory. Everybody loves the Gertie boys and uh, especially Gertie. Uh, she's serious about it. She says, when you do the Gertie voice, really make sure that you notice me a lot. Really make sure, because I'm feeling really extra needy all the time. I'm also upset about everything. I'm always really pissed about everything. Nothing's ever good enough. Yarn Prepper, love you. Heather, I know. Hey, positive life. Okay. Positive life. I need a card. Ooh, you're making enchiladas? Of course you are. SMSP, you made it. Okay, honey. Everybody loves you. Tammy Morgan, Peace 24. Jamie Palmer, honey. All right. Thank you, Jan. This is, again, a lot of you have said you like this frame. I just get bored with it. It's a snooze of a frame. It just wants me to go to sleep when I put it on. I just think it's a boring ass frame. I don't know. I. Probably shouldn't say that. Hi, Kim Leanne. Chicago uh, Big Dog. Welcome. I don't recognize your name. Hey, Shauna B. A little bit. A little bit, Lisa Kelson. Some allergies. I'm glad that you noticed. Holly Tierty's here. Dory... Good question. I have no idea. Um, I've always done weird voices, I think, since I was little. It's hard to say where that came from. Your guess is as good as mine, Dory. That's so cute, Martha Slimmer. I could see that. Don Gloves. That's okay, girl. You lurk. Such a diva. Uh, Aaron Cooper. Heather, good evening. Bridget Alexander, it's a silly voice. Hi, Zelda. Deb S., you've been sick. So is Panko. I was lying in bed with tears pouring down my face listening to you talk about Fred. Well, I'm sorry I made that worse for you probably being sick. You don't want to be sick and cry. You really kind of need to do one or the other, Deb. We hope that you get better too. Panko's a little better, but um, I'm so sorry, Deb S. We love you. Panko, thank you. You like this frame? I caught the show of Fred's celebration. It was so touching how much you cherished his life. It's so inspiring. Sending you a big hug, my friend. Olga, I love you. Thank you for saying that, Olga. I really appreciate that. I really love talking about Fred. Hi, Robin Miners, Cindy Edge, Screen Addict. I haven't seen you for a minute. Thank you, Olivia. Well, thank you, Jenny Gets Chatty. Oh, my God. Sea Catwoman. I love how Tommy calls you CC Atwoman. He's adorable, folks. Uh, Julia. Yeah, it's Gertie and the, and the Lord. Thank you, Panko. Jin Lee. It's a lot. Hey, Sharon Serendipity. Hi, Mary Hiker. Kenny Adcox. Skyrider. I love you, Jenny. Carolyn T. You're eating queso. Okay, you didn't have to share that with everybody, half because if you don't have enough to go around, Maybe you should keep it to yourself like you're doing because it sounds amazing. Laughs me. Agreed. Agreed with that. I like the shape of the frame more than the actual frame. Well, I think the, the color is a little boring. It's just kind of a pink, like a pale, but I like the shape too. I like the upsweep of the kind of the butterfly upsweep. I think it's maybe if this was black, I might like it more. I should see if I can get it in black. The tea drinking trans man. Awesome. I'm glad you made it too. Welcome. Blakey. I love Blake Reed. Always have, always will. Kathy Hall. Bex is here. Hey, Bex. Lisa from Jersey. I'm glad you made it. Hey, Carrie Ann. Oh, I love Carrie Ann. Judy Dolan. Lisa Cordick. I think it's been a minute since I've seen you. I never remind you guys to like the video because I don't know what it does. And honestly, I'm starting to give up on my life. Everything's been unsubscribed and it's depressing me more than I'm letting on. Hi, Grizzy the Mo. Thank you, Panko. Thank you. Little Red, hello. I'm almost caught up. Am I almost caught up? Almost. <laughs> CC at woman. He is so funny. Kelly Williams, welcome. 
I love that. Hey, Kim White, your Fred story doesn't make me sad. It warms my heart. Thank you. M, I'm usually a lurker, but I have to say, I haven't caught you in a live in a while. You look so different. You are glowing, holding your shoulders higher, and you look happy. Hope you're well. M, I love comments like that. I love that. Thank you, my friend. I am doing well. Thank you, M, for popping in. Um, uh, coming in hot from Texas. I love that, Marsha. Nico Squirrel Girl, or Nico yet. I thought it was Nico. Yes. Squirrel. Yeg squirrel. All right. All right. I just call you Nico anyway. Blakey, you know, I love you. Hey, Bo Beats. Bo knows I love her. Nearly Marie. Uh-huh. Yeah. H&M. I, I wore this not that long ago with a pink hat in a pale pink. I bought it in both colors. So this is the cream. I've never worn it. Um, kid, can I do something for you, girl? Okay. That's all right. You just want to put a cat ass in my face. Cat butt right there, right there for me. Okay. Um, yeah, I have it in pale pink. I thought this was a good spring top. I love you, Mark Hardman, and you know I do. Damsel Danny, yeah, it's been a minute. I'm glad you made it. SM, a voice actor, huh? That's interesting. You won't get shadow banned here? I don't know what that means, Bo, but I doubt that you would. Julia, I can see that. Rhoda's present for roll call. Uh, Brandon's here. Anna Banana. Nice. Thank you for being here, guys. Nothing but love. Kiki and the two cats who made it. Cat was. Kid, by all means. Oh, Gizzy or Jizzy? Ooh, I don't know. I don't know. I could go either way. Goosebump. Love you. Ashley Marie. It's okay. You made it. Diane Roberts. I'm starting to wonder if the people in charge of YouTube are running Scientology because uh, it's getting weird. It's getting weird how much I'm losing with people. It makes me sad. Rachel Harmon, you don't, uh, don't you dare get down, lady. We are here because of you. Love you, Rachel. I love Rachel Harmon so much. I don't think she realizes. Thank you, babe. Thank you for your super chat. Lisa Kordick, you've been quiet. Oh, I hate that. I'm sorry, girl. Well, I'm glad that you're here. Diana H., I'm really happy for you. You got moved into your new place. Tracy Murphy, hey, babe. Wow. Carrie Ann, my hair is on point. Wow. Carrie Ann, I think you're the only one that feels that way, but thank you. And, you know, it's just the one that counts. It's very kind of you. Jersey Jan, Aaron Cooper. Brittany's here. We love Brittany. Nothing like a cat ass on a Sunday evening. It was a real cat butt. Thank you, Kenny Adcox. Hey, pause for Andrea. Matt's mom forever. I haven't seen you for a minute. Love the Fred tribute. It warmed my heart. What a blessing it was that Fred came into your life. For sure, Matt's mom. Uh, many people will come in and out of your lives, our lives, but only if you leave an imprint. I totally agree with that so far. Are you good? Can you find a spot, kid, and maybe park it? Good Lord. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Thank you for saying that, Matt's mom. It's, it's, it's more than frustrating because it makes me nervous. Like, I've lost, what, about 300 in a few weeks? I mean, I don't want to dip below 20,000. We worked so hard to get here. Tommy told me today he's going below 20,000 over on the lifeboat. Do you guys remember when we celebrated that together? It makes me sad. You know, we worked really hard to get to this point. We love you guys. We want you to stay. And YouTube is unsubscribing. I'm like, am I going to dip down? Like, am I suddenly going to be at 15,000? It just sucks. It is what it is. I mean, it's not about the numbers anyway, but I want to stay where we're at and keep growing. I don't want to backpedal. Thank you. That's so kind of you to say. Thank you. I know Ty's channel. Oh my God, now I have so much cat hair on my face. It's going to drive me crazy. I needed a break from Scientology related content. I understand that, screen addict. Pamela SP Butterfly, Tony P. Ray Ray. Oh, wow. Oz Fantic? Oz Fanatic? Sorry. 
I was thinking of Ozempic when I saw that. Uh, love all the videos of friends. See the love you had for each other. Thank you, Oz Fanatic. That is the cutest thing I've ever heard, Squirrel Girl. Yesterday on the boat, saw a smile so big. Noticed Reese has dimples when she does that. Happened again when she talked about Tommy on the tribute show. Oh my God, Squirrel Girl. That is so cute that you noticed that. I don't notice that, but that's adorable. I know, Lisa Kelson, it's weird. No, Blake, I don't. I don't pay attention to anything on my channel, Blake. I don't watch the numbers. I don't do the analyzing of stuff. I don't know how. I just, I come on here. I talk to you guys. I turn it off. I know, Debbie P. It's still a bummer, though. Hey, V. McWilliams. I thought of that. Maybe, maybe there's drama going on and people are unsubscribing. I don't know. I need a card. You're hilarious. That is so nice. Hockey Town John. Love you, though. Thank you for checking your subscription, man. Great relate about earlier today. What you are, what are you, you are doing on your channels is wonderful and special. Not everyone can do this. You have a talent in relating to people and yes, making friends. Thank you, Susie. That is such a nice thing to say. Yeah, Lisa Kells, and I feel terrible for Natalie Webster. I've been talking to her. I feel terrible for her. Yeah, Brian, so uh, Panko, possibly, yeah. Uh, YouTube unsubs people from me all the time, and I have a really small channel, so losing three or four subs in a couple hours sucks. It does, yeah, it does, Brian. So, yeah, King's Kid, it's horrible. Thank you, Julia. Relate about his uh, perfection for their crossover episodes. Thank you. Squirrel Girl, I think it means something. He's your happy place. He is my happy place for sure. Love him. Jam Jam. Uh, YouTube has been so weird lately. I've unsubscribed to channel I mod for. It's so weird. Hey, Diana B. Shay, I love the relate about earlier. Just have to say, Reese, you have a way with words and your impact is real. Wow. Because of you, I literally forgot Tommy had been to prison at all. Thank you for saying that, Shay. It really got to me today. I was just kind of passionate about it. Um, and thank you. I I'm glad because it's just not who he is. It's not who the definition of Tommy. It just bothers me a lot when people think that. Oh, you wrote a long comment. It hurt. Okay. I'm sorry that I missed you. Yeah, Debbie P. I don't know. Kestrel, you're not going anywhere. I know, Zelda. Ty's channel, she's just going through something with her significant other, Tony, and it's quite sad, very upsetting. Health issues. Bridget Alexander, I found Tommy uh, after you too, so I often forget he was in prison, yeah. Hey, Terry Ray. Lacey Silver, I saw Tommy's light, not his past. Lacey, that is so sweet. We love you, Lacey. <clears throat> hey, Cassie Mosier. Nice. Hey, true to it. Hold on. I feel like I have to really clear my throat. and I'm not doing it on loud here. Still didn't really do anything. Um, Layla. Um, I kind of, I kind of brought it back down a notch, didn't I? I took the jacket off and the hat. Yes, that's the Natalie and Tony that were in Clearwater last week. Yes. I know Jenny gets chatty. So, Witchy Trista, you're cute. I love that, Jordy T. It's easy to forget he was in prison because it's not who we see today. It's not who we see today. Hey, Bear. Fred's wink is out of this world, adorably memorable. Thank you for saying that, Marsha. Uh, 
Um, and I'm not sure if you saw my comment yesterday. YouTube does this once in a while. My brother-in-law has 3 million followers and it happens to him. I was randomly uh, subscribed this week to a channel. Yeah, I guess so. It just seems very counterproductive for YouTube to do that, but I don't know. I love that, Kestrel. That is such a nice thing to say. Cindy Edge, Tommy is not defined by prison. Tommy is defined by who he is and how he helps. And he does all those things. Sin Aristocrat. Hey, Reese, I've uh, arrived to listen to everything you got going on. You look whimsical today. So fancy. Thank you. I love that word, whimsical. A touch of whimsy. I always think that chair right there is very whimsical. Um, yeah, Tampa A girl. It's it's. If you don't see that, you obviously shouldn't be here, to be quite honest. Like, if you think Tommy is those things, like just some hardened criminal, then you're not a you're not a supporter of his anyway. You know what I mean? So, thank you for saying that. Do you ever get sick of the chat like Tommy does sometimes? No shade on Tommy. I've seen lots of channels various. No way. <laughs> Though never. I never get sick of the chat. That's why I love my my channel. That's why I'm here. I can't wait to jump on here and talk to you guys. I never get, that's the last thing I would ever get sick of. Yeah, we are not our past. I get excited to see what you guys have to say. Thank you, Nana Banana. I love talking to you guys. I love it so much. So speaking of talking to you guys, what are we, 30 minutes in? No, we did that in 20 minutes. That's not bad. Um, thank you, Kathy Hall. So something weird happened today. I don't want to talk to you guys about it. And you know, you know how I get... I love that Martha Slummer and I love you. You have the best heart. Oh, lip stain tonight. Aaron F number 90, number 90. I tend to gravitate toward this one. 90 and 91. I noticed I've been wearing a lot lately. Kestrel, that's because you are my friend. I, yeah, get the lip stains, Aaron F. Even if you don't wear makeup, it just pops. It's a nice brightness to the face. It really lifts. It just, it's nice. I've been so busy moving and have missed some of uh, the lives that made me realize how much I miss you, need you in my life. Ditto Deb, I love you, girl. I love you. And I hope that moving's going okay. No, I don't see a felon. I don't see that either. My, my was a felon, had a lot of people never bother to look past that. Yeah. Um, thanks, Julia. Bridget, thank you. But I don't always keep up with the chat. You guys know I get behind sometimes. Yeah, Tony Suter, exactly. I love that. I only had to watch Tommy five minutes to see his heart. You may have sent me here, but he kept me here, there. I love that. Yeah, he's he's amazing. I mean, if it, <laughs> thank you, Keela. Um, he's amazing. He's my closest friend. It's, it's ridiculous. Yeah, you can, of course, email me. Uh, Mods will throw up a link to my email, and you're welcome to reach out. Yeah, Aaron, do it, girl. This seems to be number 90 and number 91 are good spring summer colors. Um, and they're not crazy. It's the Sephora just cream lip stain. Yep. Oh, Ulta wouldn't have it because it's Sephora brand, Tina Mays. That's right, Diana B. If you just put on lip stain, I'm telling you. Like I went to brunch today and this did not come off. Yeah, it's amazing. Exactly, Dory. Exactly. Oh, there's my email. There you go, guys. Thank you, mods. Thank you. Okay, so you guys know how I get. Um, aw. Sorry, I keep starting and then you guys say something nice and I got to read it. I used to work as a correctional officer for five years. I can tell you Tommy is not what I've ever had to work around. He's a good guy and I hope he, he is successful in everything he does. Sin, that is so, you must be new. I don't recognize your name, but I love you already. Thank you for being here and saying that. Kestrel, I love that. I love that the most. Tommy should be judged for the man he is today, not who he used to be. That's right. That's right. They are fast, Rachel. Oh, speaking of Tommy, I love you all. Reese a little more, but I love your guts. I'm off like a prom dox. Oh my God. He's so cute. You guys, that's sweet. Tommy, I hope that you saw that we were talking about you and all the nice things people said. Love you. God, he's cute. Yes. You got that right, Julia. You did. Agreed. Tommy seems so much like Fred to me. Shelly Kelly. He is. There are so many similarities. It's so cute. Jessica Colley, I have a big week coming up. What are you excited about? What are you nervous about? How can we help? I'm not nervous about anything. Um, 
I'm just super excited. I'm so excited to get there to hug Tommy, to hug all of you. Um, yeah, Layla Bradley, absolutely. Um, Jessica Holly, that's sweet of you to ask. No, no nerves, just excitement, just excitement. I love that. I'm dipping my toes with you. I feel safe here. That means the world to me. That means so much to me. And thank you for coming out and saying that. You come out when you're comfortable and you lurk when you want to lurk, but I love you already. And I want you to know that. Uh-huh. That was a deal breaker. It made stain go everywhere. Yeah. See, I, I, it can be pretty with a gloss over it, but I'm like you. I don't love it. I like it just the matte look. And this lip stain is amazing because it doesn't get dry matte. I've had dry, like matte lipsticks that get weird and like crumbly and gross. This one does not do that for me. Cindy Edge, I know. Yvonne, I'm so happy to hear that. Okay, so you're welcome. Yeah, email me. Bo, you don't need to apologize. Ditto, Deb. It's wonderful. It's wonderful to talk about Tommy and how much I love him and just what he means to me. And um, I just really, really care about him. He is, he is my person for sure. And um, I'm really proud of him. And just, he has made so much, uh, so many strides, like just mentally. I know you guys see it. But um, when did he step away from the lifeboat? Just what, a week or two ago? I mean, he's already just so much better. I can really tell a difference in his stress level. He's walking a lot. He's taking care of his body more, his mind. Hopefully he's eating. I've been pushing that on him too, but you can only do so much from here. Um. I like Tommy immensely, but I want to get smoochy with Johnny more. All right. All right. You know what? That's okay. And he, uh, maybe he'll do that with you. You know, I don't know much about his personal life, but that's hilarious. I know there's a few women in here that like to get kind of, they want to get smoochy. Thank you, Bear. Um, all right, Kim is blue. I'll get to it. I agree, K-Wax. Absolutely. Okay. I'm going to talk about what happened today with this Scientology friend. Um, oh, thank you. It's a cami. I have a cami under this with my bra because this is so see-through. Thank you for that. I didn't even notice. Um, I don't know what that means, Julia. Okay. So guys, I'm going to talk about... Uh, Thank you, love yourself. That is really nice. Thank you, Ditto Deb. Yes. Oh, I see. I see, Bo Beats. Yeah, it's okay, babe. I'm not rejecting what you said. And I love you, Bo. Whatever you say is probably true. So when I get into a story like this, I tend to not look at the chat because what I'm doing right now is I'm trying to start the story and I keep looking at the chat and getting distracted. So if you guys don't mind, I'm going to look away from the chat for now and I'm just going to talk to you about what happened today because it will keep me on focus on point. You understand and you want to hear the story anyway and you, some of you don't like it. And honestly, I don't like it when I get into a serious story and I keep trying to talk and then I'm like, oh yeah, uh, my lip stain is and I kind of get thrown off. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to focus on what I'm talking about because it was important. And it was, um, I got very emotional today. Jenny gets chatty. You're hundred percent right. So thank you, K-Wax. Um, I'm at Whole Foods today and I'm not going to name this person, but I'm just going to say there is a, a Scientologist. Welcome, Jessica Colley. That's okay. Look, I'm already doing it. There's a Scientologist that I've known since she was born. She's a little bit younger than me, and I grew up with her quite a bit off and on. I, I've known her forever, literally since she was born. Um, I've talked about her on, on my channel before. And uh, it's a weird, it's weird. <laughs> Bo Beats. Okay, okay, I'll stop looking. You're funny, Bo. It's a weird 
dynamic. I've always gotten along with this girl. I've always loved this girl. I mean, loved this girl. I was very, very close to her, uh, lived with her quite a bit and very close to her parents. Her parents were on staff. I was on staff. Um, and her mother was someone I was extremely close to, especially in particular. Her mother died. And you guys probably know who I'm talking about. I mean, I've talked about it enough, but that's not the point. Her mom went to the training program with Brenda, my mother-in-law, okay? Um, her mom went to the training program at Flag four years ago now, I think. Was that four, three or four years ago when it started? And uh, she was very close to her mother. And she is not a Scientologist, though. Was heavily a Scientologist, was in the Sea Org, on staff, very, very, very heavily in Scientology, didn't go to school, like just raised on Scientology like the rest of us. And um, she and I had been friends all this time, very close, okay? Okay. She grows up, she gets married to a non-Scientologist, she remains active. Yeah, she's out witness. Um, she remains active, kind of like I remained active, kind of dipped our toe in, but not super, super hardcore, just enough to keep friends with everybody and stay out of trouble. You know, you're not getting into ethics trouble, but she remains active to keep a relationship, especially with her mother. Okay. And her mother was kind of like, my, she was my mom to me when I was in Scientology. Her mother and I were very close. Her mom is uh, training at Flag and um, there with Brenda, my mother-in-law. And Brenda calls me a couple years ago one day and says, I need you to sit down. And I was like, okay, what's going on? And she was like, um, uh, I need to tell you something. And I'm like, okay, what is going And I'm thinking she's going to tell me my dad died. And I was like, please, please be that. Because I always look forward to when somebody tells me that so that we're no longer connected in, uh, in this world. I know that sounds terrible, but those of you who know the story know, right? So she says uh, her closest person, her closest friend there, who, they, uh, mind you, the lady's name is Liz, okay? Liz, who's like my mother, my Scientology mom anyway, very close to her. And Brenda, my mother-in-law, are like the closest of friends. They've both been on staff for about 40 years, okay? Liz just died on the training program, just dropped dead, okay? Um, she tells Brenda she's not feeling well. She's on the program. And uh, a Sea Org member takes her to an ER and drops her off doesn't let anybody go with, uh, yes, Panko, doesn't let anybody go with, just drops her off and she goes in and uh, it shows that she's first severely dehydrated and then she rallied and then she died. She went into apparently cardiac arrest. She was 61 years old. Very young and um, horrible, just a horrible, it was so rough for me. It was very hard to hear that, uh, that that woman was alone and that she hadn't seen her daughter in the, the two or three years she'd already been training. She didn't go home for a Christmas. She didn't get to call her. They were not in touch with each other and her daughter and her were very close. So I didn't take that well. I was very upset. It was very painful. Uh, you have to understand when I say I was very close to Liz, that's saying a lot because I wasn't very close to anybody in Scientology. They were all harsh, mean, you know, nasty people. Liz had a heart. Liz was one of the few that was very kind. I lived with her when I was on staff, um, uh, took care of me, um, 
Now, did she do some terrible things as a Scientologist? 100%. Liz is the one who was standing there when I got hit over the head with a fax machine and I was yelling help. Liz didn't do anything. She was standing there. Now, I don't blame Liz and I'm not mad at Liz for that. I'm just saying there were bad times, right? But when I got out and off staff and I had Huxley, Liz loved Huxley. I mean, loved him. She was very kind to me. She, she was a good person. She made mistakes. She was a Scientologist. We made some serious mistakes, okay? But she was a very good person and I will never hold anything against her. I was very depressed and sad when I heard, one, how she died. I mean, the fact that she died didn't need to die, probably could have been avoided, but they worked her to death. She had been at flag around the clock, studying overnight, sleeping all day, probably a horrible diet, you know, over fucking worked, right? Died alone, dropped off at an ER and died alone. What a time. I mean, she put her whole life into that cult. Think about that for a minute. Staff member for 40 years. And that's how her life ended. That's how they treated her. That's how she got to go. She got to die alone in a hospital, dehydrated severely with nobody there. They didn't even call her husband of 40 or, 40 or more years. They didn't even call her husband. He didn't even know she died. They didn't call her daughter. Okay. So I'm going to blow my nose, guys. Hold on. Sorry, I think I am having some allergy issues, but I'm also halfway crying. It is Martha Slemmer. So, yeah. I mean, the whole, the whole thing was just absolutely horrific, the way this woman was treated. So... I immediately am just heartbroken, right? And I reach out to Alex, her husband, who I'm very close to. I've known my entire life. I met Liz when I was three or four years old. I'd known this woman my whole life and her husband, Alex. They'd always been nice to me. And I reach out to Alex and I'm like crying. And I said, I'm so sorry. I'm so sad. I'm heartbroken. And you know what his response is? Yeah. He was like, it's really too bad. You should come into the org for a loss of a person assist. Her husband. That's his response to me. And you know how good those assists are because when Fred died, my husband, I had to go in for a loss of person assist. And that's what broke me away from science. That was the straw that broke the camel's back. My husband just died. I go in because I'm ordered to go in for a session and a loss of a person assist. And what do they do? Look around here and find something that doesn't remind you of Fred. For three straight hours, I'm crying, having to look around, finding things around the room that don't remind me of Fred. When the last thing I want to do is not think about Fred. I want everything to remind me of Fred. Everything. I never want to forget Fred. Okay? So he says, hey, come on in for a loss of person assist. I'm never going to do that again. And two, it concerns me that you have no emotion about your wife that just died. That's concerning. Okay, so I'm giving you this background here that has nothing really to do with today, but I'm giving you kind of a background as to, you know, I, this is how I tell stories. They may drag out, but I kind of want to lay out the foundation work here. So everybody's allowed to fly back for her funeral. They're allowed to come back for that from the flag training program. And the only reason they're allowed to do that, Brenda told me, was for PR purposes. They wanted to cover their asses PR wise. Like it would have looked bad. One, one of their own just dropped dead. So they had him come back. Well, Brenda's sitting here. Their shit, Liz and Brenda were in the same um, room. Birthing is what they call it in the Sea Org. There's 10 people in this room with them, okay? 10 bunk beds in this tiny little room with one bathroom. Brenda would call me. She was the, they had to structure out when they got to take showers. She had to take a shower in the dark with her phone flashlight because lights out happened. They had lights out, like I think prison. And they would have a security guard come by and make sure the lights were out. And Brenda would text me from the shower and say, I'm in the shower, I'm going to bed. And I would go, 
you're in your 60s in the dark, in the shower, that's not safe. Like, it's just the living conditions are so bad. So Brenda's texting me, telling me, this is insane. They're sharing a room with other people, right? They're sharing a 10, 10 people in a room and they're all from other parts of the, the world, okay? So Brenda's packing up Liz's shit. She's texting me. She calls me. She's coming back to Kansas City. She's packing up Liz's shit. And she's like, I have to be quiet about this because the other people in the room don't know that she died. Okay. Did you guys hear what I just said? It was interbulating. So it was bad news. In Scientology, if you pass on that somebody died, you're considered negative. That's negative. You shouldn't be sharing that. That's negative. You're being negative. So she's in the room quietly packing up this woman, this poor dead woman's stuff. And I'm like, what? And she goes, we've been given orders that we're not allowed to tell our roommates that she died because it will take them off the training program. It will, it will interbulate them, which means trigger. It will trigger them from being able to go train overnight. They're going to need an assist. They're going to need some auditing time because they're going to be upset about the loss of their friend. So she was given orders not to tell everybody, oh, that empty bed over there is because someone just croaked. Yeah. No joke. So she's quietly putting Liz's shit into Liz's suitcase to get rid of it. They didn't even send it back to Kansas City. They were just going to get rid of that shit. They just wanted it away from the room and they didn't want all the other roommates to know this is the sickest thing. Okay. This is torturous. How much is a loss of a person assist? Well, it goes by the hour, Lisa Kelson. So if you have a paid trained auditor doing it, it's like five to $800 an hour. So yep. Yeah. So Brenda's letting me know the reason I know all this is because she's on the phone with me packing up her stuff and she's letting me know because she's coming back to Kansas City and she's excited to see me. She gets to come back for a Scientology funeral. She's been gone for years. They're allowing her to come back so that she can look good because she came to the funeral. Yeah. So she's letting me know the details of all this. And in, in, the, in the interim, she's telling me that I'm packing up her stuff, but we can't tell anybody that she died. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Kim is blue. So Ty's channel, you go into debt. That's how. So she comes, we go to this funeral and I'm going to get into what happened today, but I'm giving you a background. We go to this funeral and this is the funeral I talked about where they had little clappers, those little things you go to like a party store for like New Year's Eve or whatever you guys do out in the real world. We don't celebrate that stuff, but I've seen this stuff. It's like party stuff. And those like, those like things you blow into at a child's party. Okay. I go to a Scientology funeral and all of those things, those little noisemakers are on every table. What the actual... I'm so triggered by this. So I go to this, I hadn't been to the org in a long time. Okay. This was a couple years ago. I hadn't been to the org in a long time. It's packed house. All the people I know are there. I'm just saying, yeah, party horns and clappers. I'm just saying hi to people. I'm, I'm very hurt. I'm sad about Liz. Everybody's there. Hey, hey, everybody's in a good mood. Packed house. I'm in the uh, chapel. Okay. And they give specific instructions once the funeral starts. And they're like, everybody, you're going to see these noisemakers on the table. And um, the reason for that is there's not going to be any crying aloud. And if we see anybody come down the tone scale, which means getting sad, you know, anything but happy, when you're going down the tone scale, that's what that means. You're going down into more grief, anger, sadness, okay? Okay. We want you to clap your clappers and start clapping and make as much noise as you can because we're not going to allow sadness. Not today. Okay, I'm immediately furious. And I think because my husband had died and I'd been to a lot of funerals, uh, working in senior living, funerals mean a lot to me. 
like I can't tell you, I've been to probably a hundred funerals in the last five years because I went to all the, I made friends with all the people I worked with, the seniors, and I would go to their funerals when they died. And I lost a lot of friends. Okay. It's serious. You're there to honor the person. Now they're personal, right? I'm not going to tell you what you should do at a funeral, but I know what I do. I honor the person. I close my eyes for a minute and I imagine all the good times I had with them. Typically I cry my eyes out when I'm at a funeral. Funerals are very hard for me. So I'm at this funeral and they, they, they announced that. And again, Fred died and I'm just like, excuse me, you're telling me that I'm not going to be able to cry at this funeral? Really? So Brenda goes up to talk. People individually go up to talk. They do their Scientology funeral first. The, the, the chaplain does the, uh, the minister does the reads out of the book. There's, a sp there's Scientology weddings that L. Ron Hubbard wrote. There's Scientology funerals that L. Ron Hubbard wrote. He covered A to Z, okay? There's nothing we can't do without L. Ron Hubbard. So it's not like you can go up and talk. You've got to do the speech from LRH first, okay? So we do that. And then each person goes up individually to talk about Liz and to give a story or say whatever they want to say. So my mother-in-law goes up. She's one of the first people. And she, Brenda's got a big heart. She cries a lot in, in situations like this, which is unusual because she's a 40-year staff member. And usually that's beat out of you by then. You're not really allowed to show emotion. That's why we do all those drills, guys. So she goes up, but she's particularly close to Liz. Pro hey, curious cat. Good to see you. She's particularly close to Liz. So she goes up and she's like, um, Liz and I worked together for 38 years. And she was like, and, um, and like, she starts to cry. Everybody starts. Woo! No crying. And I mean, people are screaming and I am like, I was so pissed because I'm crying and I'm trying to cry. And yeah, cat ACDC fan, I'm so sorry. I am furious. I'm sure my face was red hot because I'm trying to cry. I'm sitting here doing this and people are like, no, 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 no. Woohoo! And like freaking the fuck out. And it was so infuriating. It was so, it made me so angry. All I could think was if we, I've, I've never been to a funeral like this before. It's insane, Brian Lucas. Sickening. And so that was the whole night. I endured that for probably two to three hours. Hey, Joel Sachs. Every time. These stupid noisemakers, those plastic things are going off in my ears. And so then Liz's husband goes up there. As a matter of fact, I got a video from it. He sang a song. Okay. He sang a fucking song. And we were talking about this today because it was super weird and inappropriate. There was not a tear from him. He sang this weird ass song on a guitar. And he was like, Liz, you had to go, but we'll miss you. So like stupid, weird shit, no tears, no nothing. This guy is, uh, her husband of like 40 years, maybe a little more. Here it is. This is a Scientology. Uh, do you guys want to see this? Here we go. We've never even noticed. This is Alex. That it was our anniversary. Come Saturday, we're going out to dinner, and we were going with some friends, and I still had something to do here at, at Old Billing. Not this here, but here, here. But anyway, uh, I said, look, you go with them to the restaurant. I'll be there in just a little bit. I finished up what I had to do, about 10 minutes. And then as I was going over there, I noticed I'm just about out of gas. So I stopped a quick trip, got gas. I was inside. This is her husband, Alex. Do you guys want to see this? It's probably kind of long, but he sings a song. He sings a song about their marriage and like all of their um, anniversaries when they were on staff and how he missed all of it or like how busy they were because they were on staff all these years. Uh, do you guys, should I show this? I mean, I can, I don't know. It's a little traumatic for you, Julia. Um, this is at the funeral. Yep. This is at the funeral. You can see, you see the chaplain thing with the Scientology cross. There's the Dianetics triangle. There's the Scientology thing. All right. Panko, you don't want to see it. Everybody's saying yes, except Panko. Um, I mean, 
it's just the song. <laughs> it's just weird. It's super weird. I'm just going to preface it with that. All right. Panko, just come back. If you don't want to watch it, come back in like a minute and a half. All right. Hey, and I looked down and there's one of these big white five gallon paint buckets that has a bunch of bouquets of flowers. And I look at that and I was like, Oh, no. <laughs> People are laughing. Oh, I missed our anniversary. Oh, I am so burned. I bought some flowers and had a stroke of genius. So I took those flowers, I marched into the restaurant, and I presented them to Liz, and she's like, this, and it's like, oh, it's our anniversary. The 19th, right? Wink, wink. <laughs> she's like, oh, I completely forgot about it. <laughs> So anyway, I got through that one okay. So now we this is a funeral. To 2014, I believe it was, and I had Friday off, and I went Christmas shopping at Target. Came out, didn't really find anything that excited me. Came out, I sat down in the car, and this was at Target over off of Metcalf, and I was parked over at the side where there's just a wall, stone wall, right in front of me, and I'm looking at this wall, and I went. Oh, no. It's the 17th of December, and I have not done anything. So the muse hit me, and I had a paper plate in the car, and I grabbed this paper plate, and I wrote another verse to this earlier song that I wrote for Liz. So I have the first verse, because it was just a little one-verse ditty, and I wrote another verse. I then went back into Target, and I bought a bouquet of flowers, and I came into the York right at the end of the staff muster before they got started on the evening's work, interrupted, presented her with the flowers, and sang the song, including the new second verse, which she'd never heard before, in front of all the staff. Aww. I know, really sweet, right? <laughs> I, I definitely won props for that. Uh, reversely, after that, Liz told me to never again play a song that I've written about her in front of people. <laughs> so, not because it was bad, but any, well, maybe it was. She never actually said why, but I respected that, so I never again play a song I had written for Liz in front of other people. But I'm going to tonight, and now we're going to fast forward again, because... A few weeks ago, when Liz passed away, in that following week, I thought, you know, I need to kind of wrap up this song. Oh. I need to bring it to closure. And again, the muse hit me, and I sat down and I wrote another verse. And I now have the song complete, and I'm going to play it. There's the noisemakers, just in case anybody thought I was lying. There's those effing noisemakers. How do you guys feel about that? Let's hear that one more time. Just hear it. And down and I wrote another verse. And I now have the song complete. And I'm going to play it. Can you understand now why I flipped out every time somebody started to cry? There it is. You guys know I wasn't lying. Yes, I took this video. I'm sure it's fine to play this. What are they going to do? Tell them that's not true. This didn't happen. Sorry. Here you go. Do you guys want to hear the song? Is this not the most emotionless talk, by the way? Does this have any emotion in it to you guys? People are laughing. He's just telling a story. Anyway, a few weeks ago when Liz passed away, I figured I should finish the song. This is so fucked up. It's so, it's such a disservice. Are you guys okay with this or do you want me to stop? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, this is, this is my life. This is what I grew up around guys. This is exactly what my life was for almost 40 years. Yeah. All right, here we go. Here's the song. No, no emotion, no crying, no nothing. This song is called Nuts About You. Words. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just can't sleep, even though I'm not cheap, because I'm always thinking of you. And I'm 
not so bad, you crazy, because I'm not so bad, you crazy. Yes, I'm quite head over heels about you. Well, you've got me totsy turny, because your shape is nicely curvy, and I just can't keep my mind on my word. And I've tried concentrating, but it's really quite frustrating when I'm tripping on my feet like a jerk. <laughs> well, I'm nuts about you, so what do I do? I guess I gotta make you my one eye. And if you feel the same, I guess there's no one else to blame, and so I love you for the rest of my life. Now I'm going to cheat on the next couple of verses because I don't know him as well. He's OT7. Now it's been 16 years since you told me I do, and I still can't keep my mind off of you. And I see you have a blindness, a result of your so fineness, and some symptoms that just seem like the flu. And I've learned to live with shivers because I still get all a quiver when I hold on to your hand every night. And my heart is pounding badly because I love you all so madly, and I soar whenever you come inside. I'm so, so nuts about you, so what do I do? I'm glad you said that you'd be my wife. And since you feel the same, I guess there's no one else to blame, and so I love you for the rest of my life. Now it's been 33 years, and I'm still stuck on you, and I've no regrets in feeling this way. You've infected me with cooties, we do everything in two teeth, but side by side we always will stay. I know that no one wants to hear it, because we always tend to fear it, but the physical can't forever stay. But this year you've had to leave us, even though it kind of grieves us, but there's other games that you want to play. I'm so, so nuts about you, so what do I do? I guess I'm gonna put it this way. Even though you got away in my heart, you'll always stay because I love you for the rest of my life. I'll always love you for the rest of my life. We all will love you for the rest of our lives. Um, did you notice the last verse? He said something like, it's a shame you had to leave us, but there were games that you had to play or something like that. Yeah, that's how I, uh, that's, that was my upbringing guys. That was just another Tuesday. No big deal. Yep. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry for the people who got upset about that. Um, I, that was not to upset you, but I honestly kind of feel good that I played that. That's a good <laughs> I feel like sometimes I have some good, um, what do you call them, receipts to show things. At least you know I was telling the truth. Hey, Bo, about the clappers and the noisemakers. Um, insane, right? Okay, so let's get to the point of this story. Um, do I think he loved her? Yeah, I think he loved her, Zelda. They were very close. She loved him. They were extremely close. That doesn't change the fact. I don't know, Panko. Am I? It doesn't change the fact that, um, why do we have freaking bots in here? Ban. Okay. Um, it doesn't change the fact that, um, that was super, see, this is a really good insight guys. I want you to see, this is such actually a good example of why I don't have boundaries, why I don't think things like, does it make sense to you now when I'm like, oh, oh, okay, so that's how we do this on earth. Like, because that was my life. That's insane, right? That looks insane to you, correct? That was my whole 38 years. We had our own law. We had our own world. We had our own way of doing things. And we only surrounded e ourselves with, with each other. And we were all like that guy. There was, yes, nothing phases me. There, there was no emotion to anything. The emotion was taken out of it. And it's awkward and it's a little bit insane. And it's creepy feeling, cringy feeling, all those things. But I'm glad that you're here. And I'm glad that we saw that together. Because that is such an example of just another hour of my life all the time. Okay. Deplorable to you, Anita Card, but nothing to me. 
Um, so, you know, um, it's uncomfortable. Yeah. Cringe is the right word. All right. So let me wrap up this story. So, uh, I run into, I go to, uh, the funeral that day. Okay. And I, um, yeah, Marion Calabra, that was a funeral, a Scientology funeral. So I, yeah, the trolls are, uh, maybe the trolls are not, they, they're sending a lot of OSA in tonight. There's 780 people in here. They don't like that. So I go to this funeral and my childhood friend is there, who is the daughter of this, this woman who died. And she was very weird with me. She, I sent her a text about her mom and I told her I wanted to take her out for lunch. She never answered me. So then she comes to the funeral and I said, Hey, and she was like, Hey, and I'd never been, she'd never responded to me like this before. And I said, did you get my text? And she was like, yeah. And it was very standoffish. And I went, oh, okay. Really bothered me. Mind you, I'd known this girl since she was born. Now I should have taken into consideration it's her mother's funeral and I probably shouldn't have been so hurt, but at the time I was okay. Can't change that. And it seemed unnecessary. So I leave the funeral and I'm very upset and I was very upset at how she treated me and just how that went down. So I went, um, home and I never spoke to her again. And then I got outed by Aaron whenever later, however long later, I don't know, a year later, I don't know. And I go down the list and, uh, everybody had deleted me on Facebook. She hadn't. And I deleted her. I was so angry about what had happened to me in Scientology. I deleted her. Okay. And never talked to her again. And I had always been sad about that. I always thought, what happened there? Do you ever have that happen to you? I racked my brain for over a year. And I was like, what did I do? I wonder what I did to her. Like, what did I say to her? What did I do? Um, I'm banning them, Keela. I know the mods are too, but they're probably busy doing it. Um, so, yes, Panko. So I spend over a year wondering that. I never get an answer to it. I go over my mind over and over. I'm like, what did I say? Did I do something to her? Did I say something to her? I can't come up with anything. So I'm at Whole Foods today and I see her. And it was awkward. And I'm standing there getting sliced turkey, okay, for Huxley. And I have no idea if she knows I've been declared. I know nothing, right? And she looks at me and I look at her and I didn't do the fake thing. I noticed I don't do that anymore with people. I used to do it just like everybody else. When you see somebody you don't like and you go, hey, I used to do that all the time. I find I don't do that anymore. I'm much more myself. If I don't like you, I'm not going to fake it. So that's what happened today. She looked at me and she went, I thought that was you. And I looked back at her and I went, it's me. That was all I did. I went, it's me. Like, I don't like any of that. Is that you? You know, it's me. I've known you since you were born. Okay. First of all. And I just was still so hurt. As soon as I made eye contact, that whole incident went back through my mind that day of the funeral. And I thought I have been upset about this for years. I have been racking my mind for years thinking, what did I do to you? I've known you your whole life. I can't recall one thing I've ever said to you that was harmful. So she goes, I thought that was you. And I went, it's me. And I was so upset. I didn't say anything else. And I looked at Jeff and I said, can you stand here and wait for the turkey to be done slicing? I'm going to go get some things. I didn't even want to be around her. So he's like, sure. So I go to uh, the soup aisle and I get some of my stuff and yeah, K-Fake. But then I start thinking about it over my lentil soup that I'm replacing from the can I ate yesterday. And I was like, maybe I shouldn't, uh, maybe I shouldn't be so harsh. Um, you know, who am I to be that way? And I think, what am I accomplishing by treating her that way? What am I getting out of this? 
Because now I feel a little bad. Because that's not really who I am for someone to go, I thought that was you. And for me to be like, it's me. I don't want to be a bitch. I don't want to come off that way to somebody. And so I'm, I'm getting the soup and I start thinking about it and I start feeling bad about it. And I'm like, look, this is my one chance. I haven't seen this girl in years. I may not see her again. I don't know how to reach out to her. And I think I got to, I got to find out. I got to make things right. I got to at least see what happened there. So I go back to the Jeff and he's standing there and I said, do you know where she went? And he goes, no, I don't even know who that was. And I said, I feel like I need to go confront her and ask her why. And I explained to him who she was real quick in a nutshell. And I said, I got to say something to her. And he goes, what's that going to accomplish? Like he's real, like why? And I said, because I need an answer. And he goes, but what do you think you're going to accomplish by doing that? And I was like, I don't have time for this shit. Like, I just got to go find her. So I go find her and she looks at me and I look at her and I said, I have the distinct impression that you don't want me around you. And she was like, what? And I said, I have, I got the impression the last time I saw you that you don't want me in your space, that I make you uncomfortable, that I did something to you, that you did not want me near you. And I want to respect that if that's true, but I have to know the truth. And she said, I thought you hated me. And I said, I almost named her. I'm not going to name her. I said, I have loved you your whole life, kid. I've known you since you were born. I grew up with you. I shared things with like, you share my whole Scientology torture show. You've seen all the horrible things that happened to me. And I've seen all the horrible things that happened to you. I know every God awful traumatic event that you've been through. I don't hate you. I said, I absolutely love you. And she was like, I didn't know. And I said, well, forgive me. But I said, I was at your mom's funeral and you kind of snubbed me and it made me very uncomfortable that day. And she said, well, it was my mom's funeral. And I said, I know. And I'm stupid to even say that. I said, my husband died and I was awkward at the funeral too. And I said, I, I should have given you more grace. And I should have not been in my own head about it and judged you so harsh, but I did. And I said, I apologize for that. But I sent you, I said, a really long text and I wanted to comfort you. And I wanted to take you out to lunch and sit with you and be with you. And I said, I didn't feel like I got a good response there. And she said, thank you, Joel. She said, um, it was just a bad time for me. And I said, well, I absolutely understand that. And I'm glad that I decided to go get my soup, put it in the cart and come find you. Cause I was worried I wouldn't see you again. And then I'd be sitting on this again, thinking what happened? I had an opportunity and I didn't take it. I got the opportunity to finally confront her. So um, she knows my whole life. So we caught up for about 15 minutes and I said, she goes, I thought you hated me. She goes, you deleted me on Facebook. <laughs> and I said, no, I didn't. And then I said, oh yeah, I did. <laughs> I said, I'm so sorry. You're right. I said, well, I got declared a suppressive person. And she went, what? And I said, yeah, I got declared. And she goes, I did not know that. And I said, yeah. And I just got angry because everybody deleted me. And I said, I went down the list and I saw that you didn't delete me. So I deleted you because of what happened at the funeral. And I was just hurt and upset and going through a loss of 500 people leaving me. And I said, so I just wasn't really in my right mind. And um, I apologize. And she said, that's okay. Um, and I just said, I'm not over the loss of your mother. And I said, she kind of raised me in many ways. And I don't think that she got any kind of justice. I think that um, her whole life, they did such a disservice to her. 
And I said, she was such a lovely woman and she was very kind to me when nobody was kind to me in that church. And she said, yeah, um, she was really great. And I said, I just am sorry. I said, I, I'm sure that you're having a hard time with it. And she said, I am. But she said, but I found therapy. And I said, oh my God, I'm so proud of you. Good for you. That's huge, you guys. You have to understand that's, you know this. In Scientology, for a Scientologist to find a ther go to therapy? Like we're gonna get pancreatic cancer and die if we do that. Or we're gonna get tied down and electroshock, you know, that old chestnut. So I was like, oh man, that makes me feel good. I said, I am in therapy too. And she goes, isn't it amazing? She goes, I love therapy. And I said, I'm so proud of you. I love her. And I said, I'm so proud of you. And I got really emotional because her dad, dude in the, in the video, Susan LeBlanc, thank you for becoming a member. She's no longer a Scientologist, Kestrel. Her dad... Her mother drops dead, okay? And her dad takes the mom's place. They ship him from Kansas City. They pluck him and say, you're gonna go fill in for your wife since she died. So now you're gonna go do the training program and do that. So now he's in at FLAG right now doing the training program. He's been there for three years. And I said, how is your dad? How is he? How is Alex? And she goes, um, I don't know. And I said, is he still at the program? And she said, yeah, but he's been there for like three years. And she said, um, he's called me one time. That's her dad. It's like my dad just made me think of my dad. Like we don't matter. Nothing matters in Scientology, but getting the, getting the product, getting the job done. Fuck those kids, you know, that you made. Did he disconnect from her? No, he just doesn't. She means nothing, Panko. She means less than nothing. So she tells me about when her mom died. She says her dad was still in town, right? When Liz died, because he was here. She was there, right? Hey, Beth. And uh, she goes, do you know what my dad did? He comes over to my house and knocks on my door and I open the door and he goes, hey. And she was like, hey, she never sees her dad, right? He doesn't ever call her. She's close to the mom, but not the dad. And she go he, he opens, she opens the door and he goes, your mom died. And judging from that video you guys just saw with the no emotion, I'm guessing you believe me. And that's how they do it. She goes, he literally comes to my door. Um, yes, her dad is with Brenda at Flag. She goes, he literally comes to my door and knocks on the door and goes, your mom died. It's so heartbreaking. She's a kid. She's way younger than me. And that's how he the, delivered the news. And then he sticks around for the funeral, does his little song and dance comedy routine and ships off to flag and leaves his kid there to pick up the pieces, the emotional pieces, the loss of her mother. Yep. It means nothing, guys. And that was my life for a long time. And that is why you see me very empty behind the eyes a lot of the times. That is why somebody drops some news or Tommy says something to me that I should be feeling and I feel nothing. I don't mean to feel nothing, but that's... That's where I'm at a lot of the time. I'm the person doing that song and dance in that video. We are, tr it's trained out of us. There is no fucking emotion. We are empty behind the eyes. There's nothing there. 
And so I'm trying every day to get it back. I'm doing everything I can to find some emotion, some feeling, to feel things, to look at things through the eyes like you guys do, to experience life and the world and everybody in it and all the experiences and the happy things and the losses. I'm trying as hard as I can to be a human like you guys. And I'm getting there. I cry a lot. But I'm not you. I'm not the same as you. And I'm never going to be the same as you. I'm always going to feel a little bit automated and robotic, probably. I see him in that video that I shared, and that's more normal to me than anything else. It's just my life. That's been my life. So... That's why I thank Tommy so much because he has helped me so much in the emotional side of my healing and he gets it and he allows for those things. He knows it's okay. He, he recognizes it and he doesn't shame me for it and neither do any of you. And I come on YouTube every day and I share this. I share the embarrassing things like this with you. That's why I feel so stupid most of the time and uneducated. And that's why I feel like I don't react to things like I should. That's why I'm awkward. I'm very, very awkward. If anything else, that's how I would describe me. But it's because there's just, it's, it's, there's, it's been so, I'm, it's hard for me to sometimes, you know, somebody will say something and they're like, Reese, did you hear that? And I'm like, oh, 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 that's terrible. Oh, how sad. Oh, I, it's not sad to me. It, I don't have a lot of reactions to things. I am so much better. I have come a long way, but I want you to understand that. I'm actually really glad I shared that video. So... That was really emotional to run into her. And I cried quite a bit talking to her. And um, I do feel like I got my friend back. So I said to her, listen, I have a YouTube channel. And she said, you do? And I said, I do. And I said, it's incredible because you are one of the few people who are outside in the world now who I can come to and say, do you remember this? Do you remember that? You were there. She was there. She saw everything that I experienced. And I said to her all those things. And I said, like, you know, all, all the things we went through, like the fact that I said, you didn't go to school. I'm, I came into Kansas. I came from uh, Omaha to Kansas city. And you're like this eight year old kid going to the org all day. And I remember saying to her, do you go to school? And she was like, no, I mean, I'm homeschooled at the org. She went on course all day from 9am to 10pm. That's what she did. She didn't go to school. And then I talked to her about Shane, the guy that I was sleeping with. She was very, she knew all about that. She was there every day. And she goes, yeah, oh yeah, I remember Shane. She goes, I was actually thinking about him the other day and your relationship with him. And I said, yeah, I saw him in Seattle like a month and a half ago. And she was like, what? She goes, are you friends with him? And I said, oh God, no. And she was like, cause you guys were sleeping together and you were like 13. I said, yeah, I was. And she goes, well, when I turned 15, I started sleeping with a 25 year old man. I didn't know that cause I wasn't there. I was, I was gone at that point. And I said, what? And she said, when I was 15, yeah, I was sleeping with a 25 year old guy. And it, I just said, I didn't know that. I'm sorry. I was not there. And she said, what I want to know the answer to is she said, why didn't anybody care for us? She said, why was it okay that you were sleeping with Shane? She goes, I remember that I was there. She said, I saw it. I remember your relationship with him. He was your boyfriend. And she said, why didn't anybody call CPS? She goes, why were my parents aware of it and didn't care? Nobody cared. They all knew it. She was like, why didn't anybody advocate for us? Why We were these little girls sleeping with older men. She was like, how come everybody walked around that and didn't? I said, 
not only did they do nothing, they were buying cigarettes for me. Like it was just a known thing. And I said, the thing is, if you recall what L. Ron Hubbard said, we were beings in little bodies. We were not children. And she said, but we were when it was convenient. And I said, what do you mean? She goes, well, we were treated as adults. Yes. Around the clock. She goes, but if we, you know, we're dramatic, you call it drama dramatizing in Scientology, you're dramatizing. If you were dramatic, she said, if we got into ethics trouble, um, you know, if we uh, complain, she goes, then we were being kids. If you remember, they would say, you're being a child, you're being a kid, knock it off, quit being a kid. And I said, yeah, that's true. And she goes, so, you know, we were kids when we were bad, but we were expected to be adults otherwise. And I said, yeah. And she said, I just want to know why no one said anything. She goes, if that was today, she was like, if I saw that today, I would, I would be calling CPS immediately. Like, why were there 50 to 80 adults walking around, public staff, people coming in from Narconon? Why did everybody know that? There was a sexual relationship going on with a child and a grown man and no one said anything. And I said, I don't have an answer for you. I wish I did, but I don't. And I've made peace with it. I don't know. And I just said, I have a YouTube channel. And I said, quite a few people watch it. You know, it's... It's growing. And she said, really? And I said, yeah. Uh, and I, I would just die. I would just love to have you on because I said, people would support you. They would care for you. I said, you have no idea the friends that I've made, the support, everything, the gifts, the wisdom, everything, people, the outpouring just of everything people have done for me. And I said, they would absolutely accept you and make you feel very safe. And I said, hell, you don't even have to come on my channel. You could start your own channel. You'd be a hit with your stories. The things that I know about you, the things that you know about me, I said, you would be a huge hit. And she said, this was really sad. She said, I would love to do that, but I'm really scared too. She said, I'm really afraid that, the, that Scientology would come after me. And I said, I understand that. Trust me, but they won't. They're not going to. They're not going to do that. You've, you know too much and they love that you're scared. They want you scared. Thank you, Nico Squirrel. They're betting on the fact that you're scared. And I said, you can't be scared. Just don't do that. Um, yeah, I have a feeling she will. And I, exactly, Brian Lucas, it, I treated her like I treat you lurkers who come out and say I'm a lurker and I'm nervous, but I'm saying hi. What do I say to you guys? Thank you for talking. Thank you for coming out. But, you know, don't overdo it. You want to be a lurker, be a lurker. There's no... You're, the last thing you're going to get from me is being a Scientologist. And a Scientologist is going to push, right? Boundaries. Remember, we talked about that. Get that product. If I was being a Scientologist, I would have said, okay, well, you got to do it. I need you to do it. Let's do it. Let's do it together. No. No. I said, when you're ready, if you're ever ready, and if you ever want to talk about this, it's a safe place. I will protect you 100%. And I said, it's extremely therapeutic. You have no idea how therapeutic it is. And I said, these people will support you, love you, care for you, everything. And she said, okay, I'll, I'll think about that. She said, the thing is, I'm in therapy now. And she said, I haven't even talked about Scientology and therapy. She said, right now, I just talk about the loss of my mother. And I said, I respect that 100%. And I will not ever push you. I said, but I would like to be your friend. YouTube aside, you know, none of that. I said, I just want to, I would love to repair this relationship and be your friend because you and I went through a lot of things together that no one else knows about. 
no, Brianna, she's not in Scientology. But she also understands and knows that she will be declared. She knows the stakes, guys. That's why I never talked. I would have never spoken. But Aaron did what he did by accident. And thank God, right? But I wouldn't have talked. She's in the same boat. She didn't want to talk. Hell no. Right? Kat, you just gave me a huge epiphany about my fear of going on YouTube with my story. Why am I so scared? Wow. I love that. Kat. Don't be scared. They can't do anything to you. They just can't. Guys, I am living proof of that. You know how many people I've sold out and thrown under the bus? And I've got more. There's more. I've got plenty more stories. I've got 38 years worth of stories. I haven't shared them all. Not because I'm scared, just because I pace myself with this shit. It's depressing and upsetting, right? Kat, thank you for your super chat. I thought of that witchy Trista coming on, but no camera. I don't want to push that right now. I could tell she was apprehensive and I'm going to leave it there. I don't push people. I don't want to do that to her. And I would like to just start by being her friend. You know, she doesn't talk about it in therapy. Maybe I can take her to lunch and talk to her about it. Maybe I can get her to open up. Maybe we can both open up. Do you know how powerful the healing would be there to talk to somebody who saw what I saw, who knows all the same people I know, who went through the experiences? We lived together. This girl and I lived together. Oh, I love that. Damn, that's good. This must be Fred. Fred continues to give gifts. That man opens a door every day, Tampa A girl. And thank you for pointing that out. Abigail, it's not that who is she in that she wants to stay connected to. You don't understand. It's not, it's not, aw, this. This is why you are perfect to be on the board. That's very validating, Christy. Thank you. It's not about who is she wanting to stay connected to. It's bigger than that. It's the fear of being totally exiled on a golden rod. You are known as the devil when you're de declared, guys. It's a big deal in Scientology to get declared. It's the fear that they instill. It's the fear of that. It's just a scary thought. I would have never talked about this story. I would have never talked about Scientology publicly ever, okay? As bad as all the things that happened to me, I would have stayed in the rest of my life, you guys. I would still be there right now, going to events, signing up for services, putting Huxley in it, probably. I'm sure I would have been forced at some point. That's how strongly I felt about not getting declared it's not a choice. It's not even a thought. It's okay, Abigail. Don't apologize. I'm just explaining it to you, the bigger picture, how a Scientologist looks at it. To you guys, it's like, what's the big deal? And I get why you would feel that way. It's just, it's a big deal. In Scientology, they scare the shit out of you. Yeah, they beat you with a lot of fear, a lot of intimidation. So it was so therapeutic to run into this person. I'm so glad I left for a minute. I went and picked out a can of soup. You know, I love soup. I went and put the soup in the cart and I thought, I may not have another opportunity to do this. And I'm braver than I used to be. And because of my channel and because of all these people that support me, I'm not going to sit here and go, you know, I wish I would have. I should have said something. I would have driven home that today without, if I hadn't have said something to her and just left Whole Foods, I would have left a mess. I would have thought I'm so mad at myself that I didn't go talk to her, that I didn't say something. No, I didn't know whether she was in Scientology or not. What did your Jeff say after? Jeff was kind of, uh, he was like, what was that about? And I told him and he was like, oh, wow. I mean, I don't know. He, he's, He's heard it all, you know. But I am so 
thankful that I took that leap. I was scared. I was scared to go say something to her. And, and guys, I don't sugar, like, I'm not a fake. The last thing I am is a fake. I didn't want to go up to her and be like, Hey, um, do you have a minute? Like, I just walked up to her and I said, I have the distinct impression that you don't like me. And she was like, what? And I said, I, I just, I get a feeling that you do not want me in your space. And I said, I want to respect that if that's true, but I need to know. And she was like, no. And so I'm so glad that I approached her. Thank you, Martha. And uh, said what I said, and we cleared the air. Um, I, it's a good thing, but it's also a sad. It was very sad. And at the end, I just said, can I please hug you? I don't know how you feel. I, I always ask people now, because when I meet you guys in person, like I want to hug everybody because I never got to hug people. I was not a hugger. I didn't hug my own child in Scientology. My father did not hug me. I am not a touchy feely person. Um, I'm just not. I, I never have been being a Scientologist. You guys, we are not touchy. And I just said, can I, can I hug you? And she said, of course. And I just gave her a really big hug and I cried again and I just told her how much I respected her and I respected her mother and um, how much her mother, how all the things that her mother did, the gifts that she gave me, which was again, a big deal because people were not kind in Scientology. People were not warm and fuzzy. You guys saw a funeral just now. Nobody was like, they're there. It was no crying. You can, it's, I'm glad I showed that video. Actually, I'm really glad I showed it. I'm glad I have it. Because that is exactly how it's done. That was that funeral. I love hugging you, Martha Slemmer. God, you're cute too. You're so squeezy and your lip stain. Brian Lucas, we will meet in real life and we are going to hug, brother. Because I really feel like you are my brother. That funeral, I just am so glad I showed that to you guys. That is such an example. It is such a good example of my upbringing. That funeral, that that two or three minute video is my upbringing in a video right there. That was it. That's all you need to know, guys. That's all you need to know. And just play it on repeat. That's all it was. There's no emotion. And it was very mean. You're not allowed to show any emotion. Uh, Chris, craft some coffee. Reese, sometimes I'm numb to stuff too. I wasn't in Scientology. Sometimes it's just life. Oh, I believe that. It's not a, I'm sure it's not a Scientology thing, Chris. Um, and thank you for your super chat and telling us that. I mean, it means a lot, you know, that it makes me feel a little more normal when you say things like that. Honestly, it makes me feel a little bit better. I am too, Lisa Kelson. My God, I am too. Jeff and I just have different points of view on that. You know, she said, I'm so glad you followed your heart and didn't listen to Jeff. Jeff's just not a confrontation. Like he, he still thinks I'm a Scientologist. He says it a lot. He goes, well, you Scientologists are all that way. He says shit like that all the time. It's like a blanket statement, very generalized. Like I'll say something and he'll go, well, that doesn't surprise me. You guys are, sci you're a Scientologist. So just... <laughs> and I just think, I'm not anymore. I'm really trying not to be, but he, that's how he looks at it, guys. It's okay. He lives with me. That's his viewpoint. Let him have it. It's okay. But when I said to him, I'm going to go talk to her and I want to, I want to ask her about it. He was like, and what's that going to accomplish? What's the point of that? And I just thought that's how he thinks. That's just how he operates. He's, he's very set in his ways and that's how he is. But you know what? I am not set in my ways and I am interested in healing. I am interested in getting better. I have to get better. I will not sit in this. I will not say, well, this is just the way I am and there's no changing it. I will not say that. There is changing it. I have to do better. I have to be a better human being. There's got to be better than this. I've been a shit person my whole life. I have to be better. Hey, Barbie, Susie G, you and your friend have the unique opportunity to help each other heal because you can validate each other's experience. Yes. Yes, Susie G. On the, nail on the head there, girls. Is that how you guys say it? 
nail on the head, head on the nail. I don't know what you say, but yes, yes, 100%. 100% girl. Yeah, Brian Lucas. And thank you for your super chat, Susie. Thank you, Goosebump. Um, I hope, oh, so earlier in the live with Tommy, this was beautiful, by the way. I stopped and I said, I got to answer a text and I'll explain later why I'm doing this. Cause I don't like to text much during the lives. You know, it's rude. I feel unprofessional with you guys. But so I get a text earlier from her and she said, I just wanted to text you and tell you that it was really great seeing you today. I'm sorry that we thought we didn't like each other. You've always been a really good friend to me. And I said, I'm so glad that we ended up still liking each other. I've always loved you. Glad we caught up. Let's try to get together sometime soon if you can. I didn't want to overdo it and, you know, smother her, but I did want to, honestly. Um, I can't imagine how alone she's felt since the loss of her mother, the confusion that she's felt. Think of all of her Scientology experience, guys, are packed down, buried. She hasn't even talked about it in therapy. She told me that today. I would love to help her in any way I can, whether that be just listening or visiting her or, you know, taking her out to lunch. I don't care. I just would like to sit with her and be there for her. I'm sure that kid has been through so much. I can't imagine. Imagine all the violence and terrible things I've witnessed and heard and felt. What do you think she's been through? I can't speak for other orgs. Uh, She does have siblings, yes, but they are half siblings. And she taught, I think she's fairly close, but they don't live in town. I can't speak for other orgs, Scientology orgs, but I can tell you this particular one that we grew up in in Kansas City was God awful. It was violent, it was ugly, and it was nothing but screaming all the time. That's why I can't handle screaming. That's why I have such a hard time being in a friendship or a relationship with someone where their go-to is yelling, flying off the handle. I can't do it. I trigger so bad. I can't do it. And that's what she grew up around. Can you imagine what's behind those eyes? Can you imagine what she's seen and heard? I would love to help her with that. Janine, I'm sorry to hear that. While there's 880 of you in here, would you guys please make sure you're subscribed if you want to be? I have lost 300 subscribers and we haven't had this big of a chat in a while. If before you leave, do you mind checking? I'm losing so many subscribers and I'm hoping it's because you guys are getting unsubscribed. So um, would you mind just checking before you leave? I see the number already going down. People are leaving. So anyway, um, she hasn't had an outlet and I think you can help her. SB, yes. If I can, I want to help her. Uh, Hey, Carrie Ann, no, I did not tell her how to find my channel. Not yet. I'm not ready to, I didn't want to overload her, but trust me, I will. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, Thanks, Brian Lucas for checking. Um, I will guys, trust me. It's just, I just don't like overwhelming people. I know what it feels like to be overwhelmed and I didn't want to make her feel that way. Love you, Don Gibbs. I'm hoping to slowly but surely help her with all the stuff that she's buried. And then thanks, Abigail. And then maybe, just maybe, um, she'll want to come on my channel and tell her story. Tiff, thanks for checking, girl. I love Liv's mom. Liv's mom. This is why Aaron released you from your Scientology chains. You are now unlocked to link back with your life friend and begin healing. Yes, thank you, Carol. Carol, you know I love you. DS Kitty, it makes me sad to hear you say you were a shit person. I don't see that being the case ever. We didn't know you back then, but certain qualities of a person don't change. Your heart is huge. Thank you for saying that. Um, 
you were so thoughtful and kind. If I was leaving call, I'd want someone like you in my life. Oh, thank you for saying that. Donna, I'm glad you checked. Um, yeah, she needs space. She needs time to process what just, she just went through today with me. Um, I feel like I was a shit person. I feel like I was a shit mother. Um, that's just the way I feel about it, guys. It's just something I have to live with. I'm processing it. I'm unloading it every week in therapy. And all that really matters to me is my relationship now with my son and my relationship now with myself. And um, I can't do anything about who I was as a Scientologist, how I treated people. Um, I can tell you I wasn't as bad as Dan O'Connor. I mean, I wasn't as bad as some people. Uh, I'm in therapy, Julia. Yes, SMSP. Oh, SMSP, that's a nice thing to say. When you know better, you do better. I've never seen anyone as good at that as you are. Wow, that's huge. Thank you for saying that. That makes me feel really good. That's true, Bridget Alexander. Uh, you clearly have a huge heart race and you're using your powers for good, which is beautiful. I am using my powers for good. And I do want to say, thank you, Brian. I do want to say, I never tried to hurt anybody. I mean, I never, looking back on the things that I feel bad about, like being a bad mom or being a bad person in Scientology, I never had the intention of, I want to hurt that person. I never was like, make that person pay, torture them. That's how a lot of them were. Dan O'Connor was certainly that kind of a person. He got off on it. He was mean for sport. That was never me. I never enjoyed it. I never wanted to do that. I was on autopilot. Yeah, and I did what everybody else was doing. Is that good enough? No. Is that an excuse? Absolutely not. Does that give me a pass to treat people like shit? Mm -mm. Nope. Actually, it makes things harder for me to treat people better. I feel like I need to double down now and, and get better faster and do more good faster. I know, witness. I'll tell you one thing is I am at war with it all the time. I think about it all the time. I think about how I behaved. I think about how I am now. I go back and forth from now and then and now and then, and I play a ping pong table of it. And I'm like, who I was then, who I am now, things that come to the surface, things that trigger me, how I react to things. Um, I try to change my behavior on how I react to things, um, how I would, I might fate. I'm sorry, guys, I'm turning red because I'm on fire. It is all of a sudden really hot in here. Um, Trust me, I, I toy with it. I think about it. I overthink. I'm a cancer sign. I do it all the time. Like, how can I get better? How can I improve? How can I react differently to that? I do it all the time. I work on myself all the time. Tampa A girl. Thank you, Duchess Diana. Um, yeah, Fred is always with me, helping me. I'm telling you right now, Fred and Tommy are like both my, well, what did we call Tommy the other day? What do we call him? Oh, my emotional support, Tommy. And I have my emotional support, Fred. Um, I'm really thankful for those guys and all of you. There is not an Oregon Omaha. No, Leaping Lena, no. I know, Kfic. Thank you, Anne. So guys, I wanted to, yeah, Butch, I wanted to share that. Um, fifth wheel living. I'm a lurker mostly, but this story has me even more mad about Scientology. I'm so happy you got your friend back. You are changing lives without knowing it. Well, thank you for coming out and saying that. I appreciate you talking. Well, look, another lurker. So Amy, a long time lurker, rarely comment, but at one time I mentioned the song, I feel younger now, but, oh, I did listen to it. Was that you that told me to do that? I listened to it. I really liked it. Um, much love to you. Thank you still, Amy. It was a great song. And that's saying a lot because I'm, I don't listen to, uh, that kind of music, but it was a good song. 
you're putting all that effort you used to put into making the world a better place through Scientology to make the world a better place by being you. Yeah, Carrie Ann, thank you for saying that. Jeannie, it's all about process. You are growing and healing, so that stuff comes up. It's normal. It's good. Embrace it without beating yourself up. Trying to, girl. Trying. Thank you. That's true, ditto, Deb. So that's pretty much it. I'll end off this live again with all of you in here. Please make sure you're subscribed. That would be amazing. Um, yeah. James, maybe when she's ready to do an interview, you could do a practice interview and get her more comfortable with the idea. Yeah. If she ever is ready. Okay. If she's ever ready. Hey, Leslie girl. Um, again, it's not something I'm going to push. I get it. I know what it's like to feel pushed. Remember all the times my mom was like, please just watch an episode of this, the Leah Remini show. And I was like, no, 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 I'm not going to push her. But I think in time, I love you, Skywriter. I think in time, uh, she may come around. But you got to remember that she hasn't even talked about it in therapy. DJ, thank you for resubscribing. Marla, that's okay. I'm just glad you made it. This was, uh, it was, was a good day. And I will do that for you again. I love you. I love that idea. Guys, thank you again. I I'm serious. Thank you for being here and listening to this. It meant a lot to me. Uh, Elizabeth Frazier, I'm so glad I ran into her. And I'm so glad that I changed my attitude. Because I had a real shit attitude with her. I love you, Anita Card. And I just went, I went to a, down an aisle and I thought, God, I never contemplated something so hard picking out a can of soup. I was like, that's true, Scottsdale Nancy. I thought, I can't treat this person this way. I love this person. And maybe it's all a misunderstanding. And I've got to go clear it. I've got to go clear it up. And if it's not, and she hates me, at least I can walk away knowing, hey, she did hate me. I was right. Okay, good. Thank you, Zelda. Yeah, good story. Thank you everybody for listening. Thank you for your super chats tonight. Oh, I think I missed one. Ansley, did you become a member? Yes, I think I missed you. It was Ansley. Angela Blue, Boo, you became a member. Susan LeBlanc, I got you. I just wanna make sure I don't miss any super chats or anything like that, you guys. Mandy. Don't forget to hit that like button. Show Reese how much we all appreciate her. Love you, Reese. You're such an amazing person. Mandy Albert, thank you. Thank you, Mandy. Thank you for being a member, guys. Thank you again. Super chats, memberships. It's very, very helpful, helpful for me, especially right now. And I'm very thankful for you guys and your wisdom and all of your feedback. And it just means so much. You guys are good friends to me and I really appreciate all of you. Um, but in time, in time, we may get her on board and we may bring her on this channel. And that would be incredible and very healing, powerful. And I know for a fact you guys would treat her with so much respect and love and care. Bye, Bo. And I told her that you guys would love the hell out of her. She's adorable. She's a sweet, sweet girl. And I definitely love her. So I will keep us posted on that, on what, you know what that entails, what that means. I don't know. Um, but again, thank you for listening to me tonight. Thank you for listening to this story. If I triggered anybody, I apologize. Yeah, it was a good weekend, Tampa A. Um, thank you, Julia. I love you all. I love, love, love you guys and all your kindness. So thank you for being here for me. I know I'm kind of repeating myself, but I really want you to understand and know that and where I come from. Thank you for supporting me and Tommy as well. Um, I will be on tomorrow sometime in the afternoon, probably. Thank you, PJ Mack. You are a natural choice for the SPTV Foundation. That is such a nice thing to say. Love you guys. Love you, Joe Virus. All right, guys, I will see you tomorrow. And thanks again. Have a good night, everybody. Here comes Fred. Mm -hmm.